What's happening everyone, in this video we'll be covering the god of the Yellow River, Hebo. Hebo excels in closing the gap between him and his enemies, and requires to be up close and personal to deal some of the deadliest burst damage in the game. All of Hebo's abilities synchronize incredibly well together, and make him one of the most feared magic power casters. For today's video, we'll be playing Hebo in the middle lane. Hebo's passive is Steady Flow. Each time Hebo uses a power, he gains the Steady Flow buff which increases his magical power by 10% for 5 seconds. This effect can stack up to 3 times and the timer is refreshed when another power is used. Hebo's first ability is Water Cannon. Hebo fires a short burst of water from his sleeves, dealing magical damage to enemies in a cone. I take a point in Water Cannon at level 1 and max it first. Hebo's second ability is Flood Waters. When used, a river of water bursts forward from Hebo's sleeves, causing enemies to move slower and Hebo to move faster while in the river. I take a point in Flood Waters at level 4 and max it last. Hebo's third ability is Water Spout. Hebo funnels water into the ground, continuing to control it to burst out of the ground at the location he chooses, doing magical damage to all enemies in the area, knocking them into the air and slowing them for 2 seconds. I take a point into Water Spout at level 2, and max it second. Hebo's final ability is Crushing Wave. Hebo transforms into a wave and crashes forward, damaging all enemies in his path for magical damage. While Hebo is transformed, he is immune to all damage and crowd control effects. The wave will always go a set distance. When I play Hebo middle lane, I start off with rank 2 reinforced boots and 3 mana potions. The boots give you incredible lane sustain, and the mana potions allow the freedom of using spells to harass enemy gods as well as using them to farm last hits. My final build for Hebo will look something like this. I will finish off my reinforced boots, then get a warlock sash to become more durable in team fights. Remember, this needs 80 stacks to get full potential, so last hitting creeps is very important in mid game. I then build a Rata to Hootie for damage, and a Void Stone for some magical protection. I then build an obsidian shard to penetrate the defenses of the enemy team. The sixth item is a toss up. If their team has a lot of melee gods, you can build the gem of isolation for the passive slow effect, or get some physical protection and cooldown reduction with the breastplate of valor. Get a Pythagorean's piece for more damage, or a magi's blessing for more magical protection. For abilities I usually get purification beads, aegis amulet, and meditation. The order will vary for every game as well as when you purchase them. The first thing you want to do when you get into your lane is to hit tab and see what items your counterpart is building. This is very important because it will determine how you are going to approach the laning phase. If your opponent also has rank 2 reinforced boots, it will be very difficult to get a kill. If this is the case, I would focus on getting as many last hits as possible. Remember, this doesn't mean you have to auto attack to last hit. If you aren't planning on harassing your lane opponent, you can use your abilities on the creep waves to farm gold. If your enemy middle lane started with more damage based items, you can try to bully them out of the lane. Do this by trying to land your number 3 ability, then going up to them and hit them with a water cannon. If you use flood waters to close the gap between you and your enemy, try to position it so that the end of flood waters hits the enemy god, or forces them to run through it. Doing this can result in an extra water cannon during an encounter, which could be the difference of getting a kill, or letting the enemy get away. Once you damage the enemy god, all the creeps in the lane will start attacking you. This means you want to try to harass them when the creep wave is dying down, or else they can turn it around into a kill for themselves. What I usually do is auto attack down the melee creep wave, and once they get low, I'll water cannon them. Since the water cannon is only on a 3 second cooldown, I can do the same to the archer creeps which have less health than the melee creeps. Within the first 10 minutes of the game, your water cannon will be one shotting the archer creeps, and take the melee creep wave very low. Pushing the middle lane can be risky for some mages in Smite, but Hebo has access to some great escape abilities. If you get ganked from behind, you can do one of two things. You can start to run back to your tower and ult through the ganking jungler, saving yourself from death, or you can save your ult and try to escape into the opposite side of the jungle with the use of your number 2 ability. You'll begin to get the feel for what's best in those situations and you might even be able to turn it into a kill. Remember, once you finish your warlock sash, last hitting becomes even more important. You want to achieve 80 stacks as fast as you can to become more durable for teamfights. 
In team fights, you want to try to take down the enemy team's carries. You want to wait for the fight to develop so you don't have to waste a defensive ultimate. After your tanks initiate, try to get to the enemies that are doing the most damage on the enemy team. Try hitting them with water spout, which will stop their damage momentarily. Then close in for the kill using flood waters, followed by water cannon and an ultimate. You want to try to hit as many enemies as you can with your ultimate, because it does great damage and can turn the tide of a battle. Using crushing wave early in a fight can be risky, because you may need it later in the fight to escape from death. Knowing when and where to use crushing wave is one of the most important things when playing Hebo, and can be the deciding factor during a team fight. Hebo excels in fighting in the jungle. The jungle paths are all very skinny and it makes fighting a Hebo nearly impossible. He can lay down flood waters, slowing everyone and making his ultimate very easy to hit. Fighting the enemy team in the jungle is a great advantage for Hebo and his teammates. Hebo can also kite enemies incredibly well with flood waters and water spout and is a nightmare for any melee champion. If you miss your water spout, Anubis is a god that can turn it into a kill immediately, so use with caution. Agni is able to outpush about every god in the game with his flame trail, so try not to get backed into your tower because of this. He can also outrange everybody once he hits level 5, try to avoid being bullied out of lane by his ultimate. Be careful when casting water spout. This ability requires you to stand still for a short time and will leave you vulnerable, especially if you miss. Be on the lookout for enemies who have purchased the Aegis Amulet. This will make them immune to all damage for 2 seconds. Try not to become predictable when using Crushing Wave. Since enemies knocked up by Water Spout will continue to move in the direction they are moving, try to hit Water Spout on enemies moving towards you to put them out of position and set up a kill. The entrance for Fire Giant is a vulnerable place for the enemy team when facing a Hebo. Try to take advantage of this if you are inside. Final tip, if you need to take a piss, I suggest doing so before playing Hebo. That's all for this video guys, I hope everyone enjoyed it. If you are interested in more guides like this, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and check us out on Facebook and Twitter. I'll see you all soon.